What's going on guys, Bonafide Hustler here coming to you live from the inside of my office and today I'm going to give you five tips on really how to make more money with thrifted shoes by using eBay or you could use also local avenues as well. But anyways, I'm the Bonafide Hustler. Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, you know, this is a live show. If you're catching it and it's live, you'll know there's a little live button next to it. And so we'll reserve a little bit of time at the end for some Q&A, but I aim for this show to be really quick. I'm going to give you five tips and then we'll open it up to Q&A after that. So anyways, I'm the Bonafide Hustler. I reside in Austin, Texas, and on a part-time basis, I flip generally used items that I find from thrift stores and garage sales, yard sales, uh, flea markets, pawn shops, swap meets, um, and even big box stores. And I put this stuff on eBay, Amazon, Craigslist, my antique booth, and other consignment avenues in town. Now today, more specifically, we're going to be dialing down to shoes, and we're going to talk about really how to move them a little bit more uh, profitable or in a more profitable sense on eBay. So anyways, good to see you guys. Audio is good is what Sandy Bell Flats is saying. Good to see everyone. Let me shout out a couple people real quick, then we'll get right to the content. Jennifer Howe, we have Bowie in the house. Ben, we have Nose Picker in the house. Nose Picker, awesome. Uh, Rafiki's in the house. We have Weston Jones, the prudent gal, the, this prudent gal. So anyways, I see a lot of people here that also have picked up my newest bag, uh, not my bag guide, but my shoe guide. And uh, I can see familiar names right here that I have uh, conversed with back and forth uh, in the comment sections. But anyways, so thanks to everybody that picked up my shoe guide. Um, let's get right to the five tips on how to make more money on eBay regarding shoes. Um, now, the real question becomes is why shoes like you know why not clothing and why not uh, other things that you can sell because you know when it comes to used goods there's like a five billion things that you can find at thrift stores and there are a bunch of things at yard sales and garage sales like why not a crock pot why not you know uh, a hair dryer why why shoes and why make a guide about it? Well, because shoes are one of those things, if you do the proper shoe check, that uh, there's really nothing that can go wrong. And the return rate is super, super low on shoes. It's almost non-existent, so that's real good, as opposed to clothing, or as opposed to something electronic-based, for example. Uh, you don't have to really test shoes, right? Um, and they go in relatively small boxes, unless you're dealing with boots or something like that. They go in relatively small boxes, as opposed to, let's say, a large toy plush, or something big like you know an Xbox force feedback steering wheel. Uh, these things are much larger items and shoes will never, never be in big boxes for the most part. Um, so you're not looking at any freight or anything like that. So that's another reason why shoes is really a really good thing to start looking out for. Um, and then the last reason, of course, is that shoes are everywhere. Like you can go across the country to any thrift store. There's going to be a section section for shoes, right? There might not be a section for crock pots or hair dryers or Xbox 360, you know, force feedback steering wheels. But there will be shoes on every single, uh, nearly every single garage sale, uh, yard sale, estate sale and thrift store, you're going to see shoes. So that's another big plus on why you should, you know, become more educated into how to flip them. And more importantly, how to flip them profitable in a profitable sense. So anyways, um, good to see everybody here. Um, all right. So let's, uh, talk about real quick. And by the way, one, you know, if you're watching this live right now, let me know where you're tuning in from. I kind of want to see what the farthest bona fide hustler cheddar reaches today on this show. Are we going to reach as far as the UK, Australia? Where, where are you guys tuning in from? Let me know. Um, so let's get to tip number one. And I, I talked about this in my shoe guide. It's, it's, just like blatant as can be. And it's also, you know, in a, in a session where my highest shoe flip has occurred. And so that is be able to spot boots. Boots are the, like the number one thing in the, in the tail end of the shoe guide. I talk about scanning shoes and how to do it effectively while you're at a thrift store or something like that, more specifically a thrift store. Because when you come to a garage sale and you look at shoes, typically your bird's eye, you're like looking down and there are, you know, a couple of rows of shoes. Maybe it's on a blue tarp, you know, or maybe it's right there on the driveway, but typically you're kind of bird's eye looking down at shoes. When you go to a thrift store, that's not the case. A lot of times if you go to a Play-Doh closet, Play-Doh's closet, or you go to, you know, uh, Buffalo Exchange, or you go to a Goodwill or Savers, these shoes now are perched up a lot of times on racks. And so you don't get the luxury of doing kind of like a bird's eye, uh, you know, look at the shoe section. So you have to kind of know in a general sense, What's the most profitable kind of shoe that you can start looking for? And so that is my first tip today. And that is be able to spot boots and not necessarily Western boots. Because when most people think boots, at least when they tune into my videos, they're like, he's going to talk about cowboy boots and Western boots and two-tone boots. And it's kind of not the case, right? When I'm looking at a shoe section, I am looking for certain kind of boots, more, more specifically ankle boots, chukka boots, uh, low cut kind of boots. So I have some examples here and I want to show them to you. Um, here is a 
pair of you know, odd size 11 and a half Grenson. These are probably, these probably have resale of somewhere between 50 and let's say $65. These were found at a garage sale for I think 15, if I'm not mistaken, because I wanted to wear them. Now I'm showing you stuff that's in my personal collection because I tend to pre-box my shoes and put them on uh, a big rack that's in my garage. And that way when they're ready for sale, I just pull the box and there they go. But I do like to keep a couple cool things around and that way I can wear them for a year or two and I can still sell them for profit and thus kind of live a really cool thrifty lifestyle. So anyway, these are these are found in a garage sale. They were in really good condition. And I think I've worn these three times and they're still in really, really good condition. Um, these are more like a, <clears throat> they're like kind of like an ankle boot, uh, ankle chukka, which can kind of be synonymous, uh, not quite a desert boot or anything like that. Um, we have a standard kind of, it's kind of an interesting mesh because a lot of times you don't find this kind of style when it comes to ankle boots and thus it makes it a little bit more desirable. But that is that is kind of like that wingtip Oxford looking boot, right? It's a boot, wingtip Oxford, like a suede material, bluish color, kind of neat, you know? So that's why this could fetch somewhere between, let's say 60, 65 bucks. Um, it's in great condition. And it's an odd size, 11 and a half. Typically when I like to mess with boots and things like that, I'm honestly looking for uh, a little bit more male oriented boots. And I'm also looking at sizes that are like even size, not even sizes, but you know, not half sizes. So 10, 11, uh, 10, 11, 12s and 13s are just the best sizes that you'll find. So anyways, this is a good classic example of what you should be looking for right here, okay? I have another example right here. I'm asking a pretty good penny for these on eBay while I wear them. Uh, but yeah, these are just some rogue boots right here. And uh, there's nothing really special about these, but of, of course we have kind of like that standard boot look, but it's not like going super high, like any kind of a hunting boot or anything like that, or, uh, you know, rain boot. It's, you know, a little bit more low cut. Uh, we're looking at eyelets that are in the vicinity of three to six eyelets, which are these things right here. And then you got some lace guides on this boot, but on that other boot that you saw right there, there were no lace guides. And so you might find some variants, you know? Now, when you deal with things like Johnny Barba John Barbados and other boots like those companies, you might find slip-ons. You might find um, a little elastic thing here on the inside. You might find a zipper on the inside. Uh, you might not find laces at all. And that's okay. You know, those kind of styles are interesting and they're totally in. And some of them are even vintage, right? Uh, so if you want to take a look at something that's vintage, that's kind of interesting like that, look up the Beetle boot and you'll see what I'm talking about. But, uh, you know, this is kind of like that sweet spot where I want to be looking when I'm looking at a thrift store and when I'm going into a thrift store and I'm looking around, I kind of want to find boots that are like this cut, you know, because this does sell really, really, really well. So um, that's tip number one is look for, you know, the very first thing you should look at when you're in a thrift store and you're in the shoe section is look for boots that are this cut. Okay. Very, very important. Not the cowboy boots that are super tall, not uh, goth boots that are really tall or anything like that, but look for things that are like this. It's like half cut. Um, they're going to be called ankle boots, chukka boots, sometimes desert boots. That's all in the guide if you want to learn about that, by the way. So, um, all right. So the style is totally in. I'm looking at my notes right here. Um, they might be laced. They could be zipper sided, which I did find some zipper ones. They're in the other room, but I found them in California. Um, and those are awesome. Those are made by Cole Han. They had a Nike Air undersole. So yeah. Anyways, so that's tip number one right there. Tip number two is know your trail running shoes because trail running shoes bring really good money, more specifically the brands uh, Solomon, La Sportiva, really, really good money there. So I'm going to show you two of my trail running shoes and why one is you know worth significantly more than the other. So right here we have one of my favorite brands, right? This is called Solomon. These are two different shoes, even though I flipped them really quickly. This is a blue-gray variant right here. And then this one right here is an orange-gray-black variant, okay? Generally the same kind of shoe, except one is about two or three years more current. We can see that the letters in the font of Solomon right there is a little bit more, you know, swooped than the newer style, which is this way, right? So that's the newer style Solomon. Now the reason why this shoe right here, okay, um, sells for more than this shoe right here, even though they're generally the same shoe, is that one is actually waterproof, all right? So that's this one right here. Now, typically, you can kind of tell the waterproofing material because as you can see, one is a little bit more meshed out like this, right? Good breathability and everything like that. But the second that you close up that mesh and you get it into that kind of Gore-Tex and what uh, Solomon calls climate shield material, then you really have no more mesh. It's just a really tight woven fabric that is completely waterproof. So this shoe right here can go up to water about this tall and not get into your you know, shoe cavity. 
Um, and then this one right here, you know, you put it into water up to here, it's going to leak in, get your socks all wet. So that's the big difference between the two shoes, even though they look almost identical. All right. I mean, they're, they're basically the same model shoe. One's called an XA 3D Ultra 2, and this one's called an XA Pro 3D, you know. So, or XA 3D Ultra 2, and this one's called an XA Pro 3D. So this one right here, look at the bottoms of them. They're, they're really, really close looking, you know. But one is waterproof, and the waterproof one's going to command usually $15 to $20 more uh, when it comes to resale. So that's important, right? Uh, I actually found a pair of waterproof ones four weeks ago at a Goodwill. It was on a vlog, and I said it was going to sell for around $50, $60. actually sold for $70, it was a size 13, um, and it was a variant just like this one right here, all right? So that was a $10 shoe at a Goodwill, and it sold quickly within a week for $70. Bucks. Anyways, so look for those right there. Know your trail running shoes. And like I said, the best brands, I think, in trail running that you can start looking for, if you don't know anything about shoes, you could look for Solomon and La Sportiva. Those are really, really good brands right there. Okay. Um, let me get a couple. There's a question right here. It says, can you throw running shoes in the washer? You know, the kind of shoe, you can throw this stuff on delicate cycles if you want to. I if it's really caked with a lot of mud, it's you could argue that it's not going to do very much for the shoe. Um, I don't really get into shoes that need a whole lot of work, and I disclose that in the guide pretty, pretty accurately. Um, Brandon English says, "I find Solomon's, but they're trash pretty often. The reason why they're trash is because they're really good shoes, and a lot of people that actually use them for what they're intended to be used for use them. You know, not like." You don't see, it's really hard to find a mint pair of Solomons or something like that. But when you find them, it's like instant, instant money. So um, anyways, yeah, they are trash pretty often. It's kind of one of those things. All right. So let's uh, talk about uh, any more questions. All right. I'm going to wait till the end for the questions right there. I'm going to get to tip number three right here. Sorry, my dogs are barking and kind of like got my thoughts all uh, shifted around. So all right. Um, Let's talk about shipping for most shoes uh, because this is, this is another reason why shoes are so easy because you don't a lot of times you don't have to hunt for a box um, because the eBay I mean sorry because the USPS has a priority mail shoe box that is free it's on their site and you can get it in quantities of I thought I think 10 and 25 if I'm not mistaken at a time so um, you know if you plan on being a really good shoe seller or something like that order the packs of 25 they come uh, just real flat. Um, you have to build them yourself. It comes to Tide, and then they have a plastic around them. They put them at your doorstep, and it's free. Okay, so you have a free box. You don't have to go digging into dumpsters or anything like that. You get a free box from USPS that'll ship most shoes out. If you're dealing with a climbing shoe or something that's really light, Vibram Five Fingers or something like that, you can use the padded poly, uh, which probably needs no explanation, but it's a PRFER. I think it's what padded flat rate envelope, PFRE. Yeah, so padded flat rate envelope. Yeah. So um, that will take care of shoes that are typically more flatter or sometimes cycling shoes that are, you know, um, UK size 38 or 37, something like that. You can kind of stack those in there and get those in. But for most of the shoes that I do, it's going to be the USPS priority shoe box, which is free. The only thing is you have to ship it up. You have to ship it out USPS priority, which is still a pretty reasonable rate. Um, when you're dealing with larger shoes, such as these ankle boots sometimes, um, or actual boots or winter boots or, you know, rain boots, then you have to deal with, yeah, you have to find a box for that. But I typically go FedEx with that, and the FedEx rates are a lot better than the USPS rates. So, and those are a little bit, like the, the run of the mill kind of shoe that you're going to find mostly is going to fit into the USPS priority shoe box. And uh, I would say 10 or 20% will be the boot style, which will need their own box, but it's not super hard to find it. Um, especially in a day and age when we order a lot of things from Amazon Prime. Maybe it's just me, but I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one. But save those Amazon Prime boxes, you know? A lot of them you can put really awesome shoes in there. So, the reason, so number three is a tip because um, it's really kind of me telling you guys, like nudging you, like, hey, get into shoes and resell shoes because it's easy to get, <clears throat> you know, 70% of the shipping is uh, supplies is taken care of for, you know, for you. Like the padded flight, flat rate envelopes and the USPS shoebox priority is free. Like, so that's a huge piece of the puzzle already, you know. Um, you just have to figure out the other 30% and find boxes for those. Um, the flippin FNG says the 12, 12, eight box is a great option for boots as well. Just customize the height to five inches. So yeah, so there you go right there. Very, very interesting. 
Um, all right, 53 viewers in the house. What's up to all 53? Um, if you're liking the content, make sure you hit the like button. I don't really ask that too much, but now I'm going to ask it. Um, let's talk about number four, which is a little bit more oriented towards casual and formal shoes. And I do hustle some. I don't hustle a lot of those, but I hustle some. And I find that when I am being aware of this one issue, that it's more prominent on those shoes than anything else. Now, you guys in the feed, please help me out and let me know if this is happening to you in the thrift stores as you sift, sift through these types of shoes. But heel rub, all right? So that's basically the back of the shoe right here, right? We could call it, sometimes people call heel rub in here, but I just call it edge wear or heel rub back here. Essentially, when you want, when you buy a shoe, you want it to look like this, okay? It has to be like even back here as much as possible. The second that you see more edge wear than on one side than another, as long as it's not severe, you could probably still buy the shoe, get away with it, and take good pictures and just show it. But um, if you deal with formal and casual shoes a lot, you're going to start realizing that uh, there's a lot more wear and it's a lot more prominent on those shoes because there's really no tread on the bottom of those shoes. And we're talking about Oxford's wingtips, brogues, all that kind of stuff. They have a more flat bottom, um, which is typically a leather undersole as well. So you can f it's really obvious to see it on those shoes. And um, I think it's because people use them every single day when they go to work. And then they might get tired of them, turn them into a Goodwill. The exterior looks perfectly fine. But when you turn it over, there's some wear here. But there's like edge wear right there. And it's significant. So make sure not to pick up those kind of shoes. I mean, it's just not worth your time. It's more prominent with casual and formal shoes. Um, it's definitely a profit killer because when the person gets it, you know, if you didn't take good pictures, you have to take good pictures that show where the wear is. If you happen to get into the shoe and you're convinced that it's going to make you money, take your pictures accordingly. You have to take bird's eye pictures and back pictures so they can see the slanted, um, you know, uh, heel. I don't know what they call that part, but I guess it's the heel rubber. But you got to make sure that they see the slanted part of it or where the wear is occurring. Very, very important. So I tend to never get into shoes that have significant amounts of wear back there. I wish I could show you shoes that have it. I mean, we can kind of see it here a little bit. You see this right here? There's a white background. So if I put it perfectly to the camera, you see how there's a little bit of wear right here, more, more so than the other side? And if we go like this, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. <clears throat> there's a little horseshoe type rubber piece right here. And it's definitely worn down more on one side than the other. So that's what I'm talking about. This is still kind of passable to me, but anything more than this, I'd be very much... Uh, I wouldn't want to put that on eBay. You know, it's kind of just asking for a return right there. So anyways, that's that. Let's talk about number five, um, the shoe checks. All right, so this is really, really important. You know, the shoe check is definitely a big portion of my guide. There's an actual section about it. But anytime you deal with a shoe, make sure you twist it, contort it, bend it, make 100% sure you do a proper shoe check. So... On the top of my head, this is what I would do. If I found a shoe like this, I would twist it first of all. That kind of highlights delamination. Basically, you have a you have a primary, you have a sole, then you have a midsole, and then you have the upper or whatever it's called. So when you twist it and contort it, if there's any kind of delamination where the glue, because this is all basically glue through here, right? Unless you're dealing with like um, lumberjack boots or things like that where the stitch is actually through the entire shoe, um, these are typically just glued together. Um, so when you twist and contort it, if the glue is separated at any point, and a lot of times that's because of too much shifting around or excessive shifting around or heat-based storage, then you'll it'll be pretty obvious when you go like this, right? So I'm twisting it, contorting it, and I'm looking here on the sides, visually looking at all these little pieces to make sure that nothing is coming apart. So that's really, really important. Another shoe check. Flip the shoe over, take a look at the bottom, and make sure you see a ample amount of grip, especially if it's a shoe like this, for example, right? Any excessive amount of wear needs to be addressed, needs to be thought about, uh, considering the price in which you expect to you know, sell the shoe at. Look at the laces, look at the eyelets, look at the lace guide, look at all that kind of stuff. Frayed laces aren't the end of the world, but they can be the end of the world when you know, on the wrong kind of shoe. Like a shoe like this, for example, right? Which has a pull top lace system. Um, so there's no tying here. You just pull this, you slide this thing down and voila, you're ready to go run, right? So in a case like this, you wouldn't want frayed uh, you know, shoelaces. And if you did, you better disclose it because that's gonna eat away at your premium. Um, do you test for water waterproofness? No, I don't. Um, look at all the stitches around the upper right here. So all these are panels, right? That's what they call them. These are all panels that are sewn together to other panels to make the shoe um, 
more apt to shifting around and stuff. So you'll see more panels on shoes that are more cross training oriented or something like that. Make sure none of the panels are peeling away. Um, then you have other things like um, like graphics on the shoes. Some shoes have graphics that are heated on, and some just have some that are printed on. Like these are printed on graphics, so there won't be any kind of like you know they won't come off, right? But the ones that are heated on and like kind of adhered to or they adhered to the shoe, those, you know, with, with improper storage will start peeling off. So you have to be careful and look for that. A lot of times Hoka One One or Hoka One One shoes will have that issue. Um, what else do you want to look for? You want to look for excessive heel rub? Well, I guess this is the heel part now. <laughs> uh, yeah, so look in here. I don't see any excessive stuff in here, but also look back there, right? You want to take a look back here to make sure that there's none there. Tongue, uh, excessive tongue damage, that's pretty important. Um, if you can't see the label and, you, and you're speculating about the size and everything like that, just forget about it. Like I wouldn't even really mess with it um, unless you can pull out the insert inside the shoe and flip it over and it has some sort of size on it. Guessing a shoe size is just like asking for a shoe to sit in your store for like a year. So anyways, um, yeah. So anyway, yeah, it's called pro. By the way, someone is saying pinching paces is calling over pronation when it comes to the back being, uh, that's the term I was looking for actually, over pronation when there's like, a shaved section right here but yeah you know those those are kind of the basic shoe check that i would do i mean a more in-depth shoe check is definitely in the guide so go check that out a lot of the people that are in this feed more than likely have the guide so i'm going to ask you at this point what do you think about the guide are you having fun with it it's rather large it's actually i said it on my video is 173 slides but it's actually incorrect it's more like 183 but it's a lot of fun it took a long time for me to make it and while it's not 100 percent super perfect I would like to think that it's very close um, and it's a very large guide in my eyes it's encompassing in what I have done out there in the past 12 to 14 years reselling shoes as part of my resale arsenal it's not all that I do but I like it because it's simple and if you know what to look for it's like super simple so and then it gets really fun when you have some of these massive home run hits um, if you have the guide the foot joy golf shoe that's in the golf shoe section um the massimo it's called some it's a lucchese massimo shoe that's in the boot section so go check that out and you'll see what i'm talking about like you get some of these wild home runs that occur and they're a lot of fun once you get those it's like you're super addicted to the shoe game and you'll never go into a place not looking at shoes as one of the sources of income you know so anyways, that's tip number five is do a proper shoe check because that's super, super important. You do not want to come home and go, hey, I bought like 10 pairs of shoes, so awesome. Like, and then you come home and you realize like five pairs of them are, have like significant defects. And now, you know, your $5 shoes are selling for like 25 bucks or 20 bucks. And that's not what I'm in the shoe game for. When I built this shoe guide, I want to make sure that you guys see that I'm more or less into the shoe game for things that are like $10 and below selling for $50 and above. Like that's just a very easy flip to do and repeatable, but there are a lot of shoes that are in that guide that have sold for 100, 200, you know, that kind of stuff. So anyways, um, yes, let's take a look at um, the, the feed here. I'm going to shift over to a really quick Q&A. So if you have any questions about shoes, I'll see if I can answer them for you. And um, I'll, re I'll reply back to anything that I, that I can give you guys some insight on. And I want to read some remarks here. Christine Feeney says, I love both guides. Thank you, thank you so much. Good. Awesome. Um, we have Jan P says, do you ever glue the sole? No, I don't ever do that. Because now you're just asking for one or two things to happen. One is that they discover that you re-glued the sole, which is not good. Um, and the second thing is, if you're buying shoes that have defects, that's probably a pretty bad idea. Don't get used to that kind of stuff. Because if you apply that kind of mentality, to electronics or something like that. Now you're going to get stuck in this very mid-grade kind of hustling mentality and you won't be able to let go. Uh, you'll, you'll just be swamped with a lot of inventory that has imperfections or like in either remote or I need to order laces for that shoe. I need to re-glue that sole. You know, you don't want to be in that game. I, I like to be in the game of the things are ready to go and the feedback is going to come in and it's going to be good. That's the game I'm in. I think that's the game that most people want to be in. If you want to be in the shoe, the shoe game and be a cobbler, that's great. But most people don't want to be fixing anything. Like I want to be flipping things fast, having fun, and uh, not really tinkering and making something better, you know, when I shouldn't have picked it up in the first place. Um, Aaron Kluge says, how is your shoe guy different than Raikens? All right, so Raikens partnered up with Tina, the sole advisor, who has a YouTube channel. And as 
I know because I'm in the killer 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 shoe brands. Yeah, I'm in that group. That group is good, and as as I understand, like I don't have I don't have got the guide. I just see the group. To me, it's a little bit more formal oriented and dress oriented. And Tino's shoes are he's just a king at that kind of stuff. My guide is different in the sense that. It's everything in the past 12 or 14 years that I've really learned and I wanted to share with everybody. And it's got a lot of different things. And, you know, I'll just let the people in the feed kind of tell you, you know, how is it different? Because I'm sure people in the feed have both guides. And I got a, I got a remark the other day. I was seeing some feedback the other day. It just came wild, wildly in the Facebook feed. It just came to me and it said, um, just want to let you know I have both guides and they're inherently completely different. And they're they're both super valuable to me. Um, and he was referencing that Tino guy. I know he was, but he was like, "Yeah, you provide a lot of insights and a lot of like." There was a, a term that he put, and he said a lot of like hit the road running kind of solid advice that will get people's shoe game like off and running. But your your outlook on shoes is totally different than his. So that's good. So there's you know there's there's def definitely value in both. I would say, but I have not seen his. I'm just taking it from someone else's point of view. Um. <laughs> Hoovy the Real says, we all know the death pile, so let's make a name for the pile of defects. Yeah, there's a, you know, there's a death pile, which is the pile that you haven't listed yet, which my death pile now is probably like 15 or 20 items. I've been on vacation, um, and I'm about to go on vacation again. But um, there should be a pile for the stuff that you're like, oh, it's profitable, but you know you don't care about it, and you know you got to order a couple of things or make something better, and yeah, that pile sucks. Don't ever get in that game. That game sucks. Um, Ryan Reyna says, I passed up on a pair of new Red Wing boots the other day for 20 bucks. I'm a dummy. Whoa, man, don't, don't put that statement in here. That hurts. Uh, yeah, and Pinching Pesos just said, why? We've all missed those. We live and learn. Oh, my gosh. Red Wing boots. I just sold a pair right before I went to California. So this probably was like eight days ago, 90 days ago. A pair of Pecos Red Wings steel toe. I think they sold for 70 or 80. It was 70 actually. I can't remember. It was an offer. So I think it was 70 or 80. I, there was a pro probably picked up for like 10 bucks and they were used condition. You know, can you imagine if they were new? Jeez. Um, okay, so Christine Feeney, I have a pair of Nikes that are questionable. The inside sole is plain. Should it have the swoosh Nike symbol? All right, so if you read Shoes to Bucks, um, I allude to this in numerous places in the guide, and that is don't be so enthralled with like these really wild brands like Adidas, Nike, uh, Reebok, you know, each one of those, see, this, is, this is the reason why. Because if I tell you that Reebok and Nike and Under Armour is profitable, then you're going to spend all your time in the stores looking at almost every Reebok, Nike, Under Armour shoe. And you're going to be very frustrated when you realize that a majority of those shoes don't sell for much and they're not worth your time all right it's like me saying buy polo ralph lauren i would never say that statement right that is not an accurate statement that's 10 or 20 percent of polo ralph lauren is worth getting jazzed up about you know the other 80 percent is just consumer junk right and the same thing with nike i mean i would say 80 percent of nike is consumer grade junk uh you know reebok same thing uh adidas same thing puma you, Put them all in the same new balance it's all consumer grade junk like i just don't it doesn't have resale profitability all right and that's what we're in the game for we're not in the game to you know we're, we're in the game to make money and if it happens to have a strong brand then that's great but there are so many strong brands out there that have a large percentage of really bad items you know so um, I mean, there's so many, there's probably tens of thousands of different Nike Air something, right? Nike Air Zoom this, Nike Air Structure, Nike Air, the, you know, it's just like super abused Nike Air. So if I was to tell you, go buy some Nike Air stuff, you'd be screwed, like immediately. So I'm not going to tell you to do that. And when I see that statement that you put up here, I have a pair of shoes that are questionable and the inside sole is plan should have a swoosh Nike symbol. I don't know. There are too many Nikes out there. Tens of thousands of Nikes have been produced in the past 20, you know, 20 years. How could anyone possibly know what's fake and what's real? It just gets really, really touchy. The fakes are typically going to be on the higher end stuff, the LeBrons, the Jordans, um, you know, the the KD, the, the Kevin Durant ones. Like you're going to see a little bit more fakes on those things. Just like when you're dealing with Adidas, you're going to find more fakes with the Yeezys, the NMDs. Um, so 
yeah, there are portions of those um, shoe brands that are wonderful, you know, wonderful to uh, resell. But as a, as a whole, I tend to stay away from those brands because you could spend all day in a thrift store looking at them. I mean, they're just everywhere you go. There's an oversaturation in the market. So anyways, so Ryan Reyna, here's a question. Is there any money in Nike shoes? I haven't found almost any worth more than 35 bucks. See what I'm saying? So like, that's basically the statement I was just alluding to. If you're in the, if you're in the game to buy a $10 shoe and sell it for 35 or less, you know, my shoe guide probably isn't for you. Uh, cause my shoe guide teaches to make more than that. So, um, OGC, Chris, do you have a basic store? If so, do you ever run out of listings? No, I don't ever run out of listings. I have a $60 plan, whatever that is. Um, Tyler Hugh art, where can I get the book? So the book is, I, here's the thing. I put a special deal on the book just for this show right here. And I might do it for other shows. I don't know yet. The best deal occurred last week for the book. I'm going to, I'm not going to lie to anybody. Like I always say that the best deal of anything that I make will be when it first comes out. But for this show, I did put a link down below. So if you check it out, it'll knock out $8 of the price, right? It'll bring the bag, the shoe guide from 47 to 39. So there you go. Um, and that's where you can, I, you know, a small discount. That's good. I want, you know, if you're sitting down there waiting for like a rock bottom discount, it might take a while. And I'm a huge advocate on learn this stuff now. All right. Learn this stuff now, but especially before neighborhood wide, wide garage sale season, I mean, learn what to look for. Cause that shoe guide is chock full of pictures. Like there's so many pictures in there. It's ridiculous. The actual full resolution version of that guide is 2.2 gigabytes, which might not sound like a lot, but when you, put it in an editing program and you crop things and this and that, and you drag and drop, you start to realize that 183 slides at 2.2 gigs is a lot of pictures, like a ton. So anyways, there's a lot to learn and I want you guys to read through it and really keep revisiting that guide as much as possible because what it's going to do for you, you might not realize it now. Okay. But you'll realize it when you're in the mix and when you're in the thrift, the thrift stores where you're at a garage sale, your mind already has the pictures in it. You might not know and feel it or even, you know, you'll just, it'll just happen. You'll be like, holy crap. Like I saw that in the guide, like, and you'll just ask like how much they'll be like three bucks for that. And you're like, holy crap. All right, cool. I'll buy it, do the shoe check, everything. And then you've made the price of the guide back in like two seconds, you know? So anyways, um, that's how I look at life. You know, when I, when I want to learn something new, whether it be Photoshop or Illustrator or WordPress or something like that, I sure as hell don't try to figure it out on my own. Right. I'm always going to udemy.com. I'm buying a course. Like I am forget learning this stuff on your own. It's just learn through someone who's made a lot of mistakes. That's just the key of saving time in life. Um, Jan P do you think the styles in the book will reduce in price over time? Um, no, I don't think, I think the styles in the book are going to be styles that are going to be good for a long time. Rain boots, you know, whether they're made by Tory Burch or Hunter, they've been around for a while, you know, and, um, they've, they have a really good commanding market. Now Hunter recently started selling to Target or is found at Target. So that kind of sucks, but you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't sit back and go, you know, anything, okay, anything out there, any guide ever made is showing you a snapshot of present day to the past of the market, right? And the market is always evolving. It's, all, it's always changing. So it's like seeing, you know, a list of stock picks from some awesome website, stockpicker.com or just something, you know, E-Trade. And we could apply that question like, are these stocks going to be good stocks in a year or two? Who knows, you know, um, I tend to repeat a lot of profitable hustles and that's the reason why I created the guide because I'm not creating the guide to show you what sold really well last month. I'm sh I created the guide to show you what really sold well in the past 12 to 14 years for me. So that's what the guide's all about in my eyes. And it teaches you a lot of stuff, but you know, things change, things change all the time. Uh, you know, when I was first starting out reselling, there was a time when these little like pocket LCD Yahtzee games were selling for a great amount of money. Now it's like you could, you couldn't even get five bucks for them. Does that ruin my hustle? No, I pivoted. I adapted. Everything was fine. You know? Um, <laughs> okay. So here we go. Um, Brandon English, you need to make Strella shoes, man. There's a lot of stuff I need to make, but the next step of, from these hats will be 
dad hats is what they're called. So that's the second thing. I do have shirts ready in my house that need to be shot, put on the site and everything. But anyways, um, I might do Strella sandals or something like that. Um, I do have Strella shoes. I do actually have a pair, um, but I won't say anything more than that. Um, who be the real? E money was looking pretty cut and Cali has he been getting you at the gym? I mean, we're both really fit and he's a pretty cut guy. He he actually tracks his calories significantly. I don't. Um I go for a different kind of like look and like performance, I guess. Um Ryan Reyna, Chris, what video games are you playing right now? Uh these aren't really shoe questions, but uh the other day I was playing Mario Kart and Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Um okay. Ben says, I challenge you to some Street Fighter. Dude, I'm telling you, like, it's really hard to beat me on Street Fighter, but okay. Um, any more shoe questions? Let's see what we got here. Um, Tyler says, Jordans sell really well. Yes. I picked up a pair for a buck, flipped them for 60. Yeah, you know, especially retro Jordans and um, things like that. But Jordans also have been made in a pretty saturated sense. There's so many of them. So... I like to deal with the, maybe the first 10 or 15 actual styles ever since the first one came out to like the 15th revision. I like those first 15 a lot personally, um, but there's just so many different ones, man. Um, and if you get into LeBron ones, like those are even crazier. I don't even mess with those, honestly. The market is just so saturated at that point. And then you can deal with what I have found with some high, how do I say it? high grade in demand shoes at the moment you deal with people that are different like they're just a little bit more on the returnee side they're very nitpicky you know they're sneakerheads more than likely so if you the way you're describing it isn't exactly the way that it is they might be like ah this scuff is just game over no can't do it return it back you might not even get the right product back so you have to be real careful there's a lot of weird stuff that occurs in sneakerhead culture when you're selling on ebay so um, <laughs> Daryl V. Here's another one. Found a pair of Yeezys. They look legit, but how would you go about authenticating them? See, this is the thing. I stay away from things like that because that's not worth my eBay account whatsoever. Um, and the funny thing is when you deal with things like fakes or faked brands, counterfeit brands, you can have a real item and the person on the other side just is not convinced it's real. So they send it back to you regardless. I've had it happen with Toomey stuff. It's kind of ridiculous. It's just weird. So um, be real careful if you do somehow self-authenticate them. You know, at that point, you might send them off thinking that they're real, but they're not. And then you get a return or they are real, but then you get a fake back. You just never know. That's the reason why I don't mess with those kind of things. I just don't. Um, because there's just too much. There's too much of my energy wrapped up in those thought processes. I like, I like knowing for sure that something's going to sell for a kind of roundabout price. But the second that I get unsure about something and that, then the price starts fluctuating and then I start thinking and second guessing myself and it just gets all weird. Like I don't want my energy going in that direction, you know? Um, Okay, so Alan Gosser says, out of here, thank you for all the tips you've given us. You've brought this guy a long way. Cool, Alan. That's awesome. Um, Daryl V says, appreciate it. How important is it having the OEM laces? So nose pickers asking a good question. You know, for something like this, an OEM lace is absolutely, like, completely needed, okay? Because there's, there's no other lace that will do this. If you resell a pair of... Adidas golf shoes with, let's say, the BOA lacing system. That's a wire lacing system. Yeah, you, there's no other way to get around that. You need the OEM BOA lace. Um, now, how many times in the past two years have I bought laces anywhere else? Never. So a lot of the things that are in shoes to bucks, in fact, just about all of them, because I haven't in the past two, three, four years, I haven't bought laces anywhere. Like, I can't remember the last time I've gotten bought laces for a, a pair of shoes. So a lot of things that I buy you know, can be sold um, with a messed up lace here or there, you know, some. Uh, they could be missing an insole, which a lot of great high-grade running shoes and trail running shoes, you're miss missing the insole, not a big deal. People are still going to buy them. Um, but, yeah, I haven't bought any OEM laces for anything I can, ever. I don't even think I've ever done it. So I can't say that it's very important with the shoes that are that I particularly – resold in that are in that guide um 
All right. So I think the other question is like, would I buy shoes without laces? Yes. There are a couple pictures in the shoe guide of shoes without laces. Um, have I seen the new eBay mobile listing system? I'm not a fan. No, I have not, Matt. I tend to shoot all my stuff on an SD card with a high uh, high res camera, and then when I'm just you know nice and chilled out on the couch, I put it into my laptop and I do listing all at once. So that's the way I like to do it. Ben, how do I legit check Jordans? I don't sell many Jordans, so it's one of those things that you know too much energy, too much time. And if you get a legit check, that's great. You're still exposed you know, at the other end. So that's the reason why I really do not like to mess with things that are in like mega, mega high, like demand, like Jordans or LeBron's or KD's or things like that. I would, I would mess with KD's. I just don't get into like those rage type shoes. Um, I have one pair of NMDs right now for sale. I have one pair of ultra boosts that are really cool. that are uncaged. Those are nice. Um, but I don't have any Yeezys for sale. I mean, Jordans, um, I have one Jordan for sale. And yeah, I just I tend not to get into those kind of shoes. Um, okay, any more questions? Euro size, do I mention it in the title? Um, yeah, if you have enough room left, and the shoe guide will show you that, but if you have enough room, room left, then yeah, mention the Euro size. But if you can't mention the Euro size, you can still do the drop down Euro size in eBay, which is highly, highly suggested to, to do on most shoes. Um, Thriller Gorilla Picker. I found some Keen High Tops, 12 double E. Is that extra, extra wide? Yes, that is extra wide. I think, ex I think, okay, hold on. 2E is, okay, so E is wide, 2E is extra wide. Yeah, so I think it's just extra wide. If you put 12 EE -E and you put extra wide, they're going to know exactly what you're talking about. So I don't know if that's extra, extra wide. I think it's just extra wide. Someone help me out on that. Because when I got a triple E, a three E, or a four E, or a double E, at that point I just put extra wide, and I put, uh, <laughs> you know, whatever it says. Um, here, here's the thing. Anytime that you do a shoe listing, all right, because anyone that buys stuff on eBay tends to look through most of the pictures, especially dealing with a shoe. So you want to have it, you know, you want to take a really nice picture of that tag right there. Okay, super, super important. And they will see if it's a 4E or an M or a D or a C or B or whatever, you know, and that'll tell them the width of the shoe. So really, really important to do that. That should be the last picture. Um, if you look at the shoe guide, there is a section that shows the 12 pictures that I take and the angles and everything for eBay and why. So really important. Um, do you use anything to clean shoes for smell? No. I usually do not uh, get into super, super smelly, smelly shoes, but shoes with a little bit of smoke smell, I'll disclose it, but a shoe with an incredibly bad odor, a lot of times you're going to find shoes with incredibly bad odor being heavily used. So I don't mess with heavily used shoes in the first place. And so thus, I haven't had to say there's a weird odor in any of my shoe listings in the past forever. And you know, I just don't get into those. Chris, how about some Ultra Z Drop? I've sold those before. Those are a little bit more minimalist type shoes with a really wide toe box. Um, but yeah, the Z Drops did really well. Um, I found them with and without, with and without laces. Um, really odd looking kind of shoe, honestly. But um, you know, Ultras are good. They're not they're not like mainstream by any means, but uh, they're good. They're a, little, they're a little bit. I don't know. People that buy an Ultra are usually going to be in the 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 market for a new balance minimus or something like that maybe a innovate f light or something you know these like shoes are really 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 thin undersoles with a nice wide platform so not like a 3.0 nike free undersole by any means but a little bit more flatter wider nice base print you know and so these f light innovate shoes will have it uh the ultra z drops will have it um, and then the New Balance Minimus is typically probably the best seller in that category. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. So, anyways, any oh, on shoes that have that don't have any letters, it automatically means it's a medium D. I typically like that's a really good question. Like if I don't see the actual 
letter, the corresponding letter, a B or a D or a C or, you know, a triple E or anything like that. Well, anything E is going to show E, by the way, just so, and then you'll be able to kind of just look at it and be like, holy crap, that's pretty wide. Uh, typically E, e should be, you know, New Balance. You're going to find uh, Brooks. Uh, they're like specific brands that really have good E-line shoes. So something like this that does not show, all right, an M or anything like that is implied to me as an M. So, yeah. Um, all right. So I guess that's pretty much it. So hopefully, um, you know, this show, this show, I didn't want it to go like very long or anything like that, but, um, I wanted to answer, you know, some of you guys just shoot questions. I wanted to leave the show with five shoe tips. So if you missed the entire show, please go back and take a look at it. And of course at the very end, um, well in the middle, I kind of hinted, but there is a small micro discount that I'm going to leave on this show indefinitely. Um, It'll save you eight bucks on the shoe guide. So if you haven't got it and maybe you missed out on that super awesome intro deal, there's still a little deal here and uh, you can check it out. It'll be the first, uh, I'll put it as a link, a linked comment and I'll also put it as the first link down below. So if you're interested to get the shoe guide, um, you know, it's, it's sold really well and it, you know, I've had nothing but really positive, positive uh, responses for it. I'll leave you guys with a comment that came this morning um, and I'll kind of just, Show you. Let me see if I can find it real quick. It was a really good comment, really nice. You know, I haven't met a lot, a lot of people that have bought this guy. I've never met him in real life, right? But I think, you know, the fact that they take some time out of their day to let me know about something about a project that they know I've worked hard on is pretty interesting, you know? So um, here we go. Brian Wood, Woodyard, that's his name right here, right? So it's just chilling right here. This came in this morning. There it is. Um, came in at 11 oh not last night 11 08 while i was sleeping so it says uh i just finished your shoe guide it was really well it was really written well it sure did stuff a good amount of tips in there i'm loving it uh picked up a pair of blah 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 gonna make money no matter what on that thank you for the knowledge and then i just basically said hey thanks uh you're very welcome thank you for the mini testimonial so that's pretty cool and i got some testimonials here and there it's a pretty big guide. Unlike the bags, the bucks one, which I got testimonials literally the day that I launched that guide. This guide is big. It's a much bigger guide. And I think people were taking their time to go through it because it's, it's a lot of information. It really, really is. Um, so, you know, the amount that I make on the guide really just rewards me for the immense amount of time that I spent in a coffee shop building this thing. And all of the four to five hard drives that I had to sift through and the tens of thousands of pictures that I had to whittle down into a thousand pictures. And then those thousand pictures I had to whittle down to, you know, maybe 400 that were found in the guide. I mean, that all took so much time. Um, and then I had to really think about that content and go, you know, how can I make this content not so high level, but digestible to a general public that has no idea how to resell shoes. And so I really dialed it down into a very nice basic format that, hopefully spurs people to get really energized about the shoe game to make money in it and to see that hey you know someone that is one degree of separation away from me literally like facebook message uh is doing it he's in austin texas he's not like a really special dude or anything but he's doing it you know and uh i don't think there's anything super special about what this is but um I think there's two different kind of shoe games going on right now. One is the one that I write about in the book, which is reselling typically used shoes and then putting them on eBay uh, and local markets because they do sell on local markets as well. But the other shoe game that you see frequently on Instagram is the one where you go to the Nike shoe outlet and you do the friends and family thing and you know, all these little discount and cards and everything. And you're buying, sh you know, truckloads of shoes and you're throwing them to FBA um, and then making, you know, whatever on each one. Um, and that's a different kind of shoe game. And that one's working right now for a lot of people. Um, I personally don't see how it's going to work in a, in five years or a decade because it's hinged primarily upon one brand. Um, and the second that that brand decides to move in a controlling manner in any direction, I think the people that are going to get squeezed pretty hard. So I much rather, <clears throat> and I, and I think that one's a little bit more towards outlet malls and things like that. And I personally just like the thrill of the hunt better. And I like to stay closer to my house. Um, and that's just me, right? Both shoe games work as of right now. Mine has worked for 12 and 14, you know, 12 to 14 years. That one is a little bit more recent. It's hard to say if it's going to last 12 or 14 years, but anyways, I think there's a two different shoe games going on right now. And one you can make a lot of money on and the other one you can make good money on. Right. Um, so check it out. The shoe guide is down below. It'll be the link. It'll save you a little bit of money and 
hopefully that's all you need to know, right? I'll make some more videos uh, regarding shoes coming up soon. But uh, it was fun hanging out with you guys. And if you happen to catch it live, thank you for all the really good comments and stuff like that. And if you can't, if you caught this thing late, just wait until it becomes a normal video on my channel. Watch through the whole thing. Definitely get those five tips down. And uh, you know, if you want to execute them to the fullest extent, take those five tips. Look at the guide. Go hit garage sales this weekend. Go hit a thrift store tomorrow. Start making some money. All right, guys. So that's pretty much it. I will see you on the next Bonafide Hustler broadcast. Take it easy. Goodbye.